Hello and welcome to Acute Medicine Shorts number three. This is about alcohol history and advice. This is part of a um, series for the acute medicine students and those preparing for practice um, to help facilitate clinical learning uh, whilst unfortunately you're unable to see the patients. And so this episode focuses on alcohol history and of course you're welcome to get in touch with me if you have any ideas for other talks. The aims of this presentation is to uh, be able to calculate a patient's alcohol intake, knowing safe limits of alcohol intake, taking an alcohol history and giving brief advice. Why is it important to know someone's alcohol history? Well, of course, it's important about identifying coexistent disease, um, such as in the liver, but also it's important to um, realise that if a patient is um, a dependent drinker, then it's possible that if they're being admitted for something else, let's say community acquired pneumonia, uh, then there's a high risk that they may develop alcohol withdrawal syndrome whilst in hospital, and it's important, therefore, that we recognise patients' uh, alcohol intake prior to admission. So what does one unit of alcohol look like? So I put up here, this is from the Drink Aware campaign. Uh, you've got your standard alco pops at 250 mils uh, versus 4.5 cider is 218 mils. And you can see uh, the rest there for comparison. This is another way of putting um, the, for example, it includes wine, uh, cans of lager uh, and various other spirits. So you can see roughly um, what equates to one unit and so it's worth knowing uh, one or two um, values um, in accordance with how much someone might drink. So what are safe limits? Well all for all adults uh, it's 14 uh, units per week um, ideally over three days or more and obviously we should discourage people from binge drinking. Um, certainly younger people, you should avoid alcohol, of course, uh, before the age of 15, and certainly you should be drinking less than adults. Uh, what, of course, what we haven't studied, is, of course, is what a studied uh, safe limit is in children. Therefore, of course, we would advise caution. Uh, pregnancy, we avoid, uh, or we say recommend pay, uh, people avoid alcohol throughout. A binge is defined as more than six units uh, for women and eight units for men on a single occasion. And of course, this is a really important practice point that severely dependent drinkers should never be told to abruptly stop drinking because of the risk of alcohol withdrawal syndrome, which initially just can cause sweating, tachycardia, but can lead on to um, fits. Remember some of the cerebral effects of alcohol, so uh, slurred speech, impulsive behaviour, recklessness, short-term memory loss, uh, coordination such as putting our keys in a lock, I'm sure uh, none of you have ever struggled to do that after a night out, uh, aggression, loss of inhibitions, excessive talking, um, which is something I perhaps have a tendency to do, although I don't drink, I must say, uh, memory loss. Uh, cerebellum, shaking, staggering, slurred speech and occipital load, blurred vision and speed perception. So what is brief advice? So it's important to be opportunistic about it. Sometimes you'll find when um, you're, you're clerking a patient, having a discussion with them, or taking their social history, um, it'll play out in a moment which you're not quite talking about. Um, but certainly, so take that if the patient is giving you a signal that they want to talk about it, uh, or it's an appropriate time in your history. So it's about recognizing to take your opportunities, but keep it structured. Remember that alcohol-related illnesses and injury have a massive burden, um, both socially, financially, medically, uh, and so on. So obviously we want to reduce injury, um, so things like um, pub assaults, domestic violence, and so on, um, illness of the patient, so developing alcoholic hepatitis, liver fibrosis, and then cirrhotic liver, family, so again, the cost of a dependency drinker, so um, family interactions, child abuse, uh, domestic violence, uh, finances on the family, impact on so health and social services. So, you know, significant alcohol, as I'm sure you can appreciate, actually has much wider ramifications than what we might just see um, when we meet a patient in front of us who is a dependent drinker. It's aimed at those primarily who are drinking at increasing or high risk levels. Uh, and a nice piece of data is that those who receive brief advice are twice as likely to moderate their drinking six to 12 months after an intervention. So there is some merit in uh, giving uh, brief but structured advice. 
So you guys probably have heard of the CAGE questionnaire. Now, we tend to now have moved to the Audit C score. Now, there are two versions of this. This is the simplified version um, that you can ask somebody in the emergency department. And this, so the, the C in Audit C stands for consumption. And it's to give you a structured way of asking about how much someone drinks. And you can see the three questions up there and the total of the score. So how often do you drink alcohol? How many units of alcohol? And how often do you have six uh, or more units if you're female or eight uh, if you're a male? Uh, obviously, you then calculate the score. When we then go on to the full audit, see obviously you can see that some of this integrates uh, some of the cage-like questions. So uh, again, you've got your audit C questions, which are at the top three. Then you have how often have you found you're not able to stop drinking, uh, failed to do what was normally expected from you, um, needed to get an alcoholic drink in the morning, uh, feeling guilt, remorse, uh, unable to remember, someone been injured or someone being concerned. So they want you either you do the audit C or the full audit and um, the link for uh, both of these tools with a blog is available at www.alcohollever.com forward slash tools. The link is on the slide. So I depending on whether you do the full audit score or the audit C, you then basically want to classify your patient into these categories. So uh, if they have a 0 to 7 audit score or 1 to 4 audit C, then they are at lower risk of drinking or abstinence. Then it, of course, it'd be positive affirmation, i.e. Uh, that it's great that they um, avoid alcohol or so on. Uh, and then you've got at the other end of the spectrum, you have an audit score of 20 to 40 or audit C of 11 to 12. And this would suggest probable or possible dependence um, and therefore a comprehensive assessment is needed within a clinical interview. Um, and that's why you'd also refer the patient to the alcohol liaison services. So um, when if you see a patient in A&E who does a, has an audit C score of, say, 11 or 12, then you should be thinking about referring them to our hospital alcohol liaison services. This is primarily based in the community, but does give you um, an idea of where uh, you might signpost your patients, either from the community or what you think you might need to do with them, even if they are in hospital. And again, so you start with your um, suspected alcohol risk, you do your audit C, uh, then you decide, look at the totality of their units, and then you can basically, again, um, put them into red category, so high risk, um, medium category or amber, uh, and then obviously green for lower risk. Then what you want to do, let's talk about the high risk patients first. So there are a couple of ways around this. You can either do an enhanced liver fibrosis test. Um, and I've again uh, posted the link to you up on the slide about how this test is carried out and what it actually does. Uh, fibro scan we're going to talk in a moment and then you can refer to alcohol services. So at the bottom three, you have about fibro scan. So we're gonna talk about that now. Fibro scanning is a relatively new technique um, which uh, basically gives you a bedside point of care ultrasound to detect uh, the degree of inflammation on the liver and you measure it in 2 to 75 kilopascals, that's a range, uh, and then you classify accordingly. You can see where uh, the blue um, uh, wavelength in 0.0 millimeters per second gives you a median um, fibro scan score of 4.7. So this is a normal fibro scan. So he would categorize into the 11. So you've got F0 is no scarring, F2, 7 to 11 kilopascals. Uh, moderate fibrosis and F4 is cirrhotic, so that'd be greater than 14 uh, kilopascals. So the average normal result is around 5.3. This patient has a median um, score in kilopascals of 4.7. So this is a normal liver. And again, I've put a link at the bottom towards the technology. So again, this is you've got the reminder of the alcohol units on top, um, but you want to think about and discuss with the patient some of the common effects of their drinking, um, progressively increasing the risk of low energy, memory loss, insomnia, impotence, and so on.
So what is um, structured advice? So essentially you're going to do four things. You're going to give feedback on the common effects which we've just talked about or shown on the previous slide. You want to give your patient an assessed risk level, so are they a low risk drinker or a dependent drinker? The feedback on the benefits of reduction such as reduced cardiovascular profile uh, and so on. Uh, and advice on units and lower risk levels of drinking. I've put on this slide some resources for you. So the first one is a BMJ article on managing a patient with acute alcohol intoxication, uh, which is quite a good, fairly focused article and quite useful for those doing acute medicine and emergency medicine. If you want to uh, follow up on what we've talked about on the alcohol identification brief advice, there is a e-learning for health um, programs, which is easily, um, easily um, available to you. You should be uh, able to register. Uh, and then the third one is the drinkaware.co.uk website for health professionals, which has statistics and other information. So, as always, feel free to use the Acute Medicine Moodle uh, section, which has a Q&A, or, of course, you can email me directly via UCL website. Take care, everybody, and thanks for listening.